out here in my backyard and I'm noticing there are so many beautiful plants and flowers that are blooming right now. And I just thought, wouldn't this just be an absolutely great time to collect some of these and press them and then make some pressed flower artwork. But what does pressing the flowers really do? Is it like pressing an easy button? That was easy. No, pressing the flowers preserves them so that they stay beautiful for a long time. What you say? I'm sure you're feeling a little confused. Like, pressing the flowers really keeps them beautiful? How is that possible? Pressing your peanut butter and jelly sandwich doesn't preserve it for your lunch, and pressing your cookies certainly doesn't preserve it for tomorrow. So how can pressing the flowers keep them preserved or beautiful? Well, pressing the flowers will push the water out of the flowers and leave behind the beautiful color. So in essence, it dehydrates or takes the water out of the flower and you're left with the beautiful part or the color of the flower. So what we're going to do is today we will collect some of these flowers and then we will press them and then we will make our pressed flower artwork. So I want you to go around and look and like right now, I see an absolutely gorgeous dandelion. I don't know if, <laughs> if there's people out there that would call dandelions gorgeous, but um, that one's a cool one, so I'll collect that. Um, I have these little violets that are wild growing in my yard. So I'm gonna get a couple of these little violets. They're really cool. Um, you might not have those because you might have treated for weeds in your yard and we did not so I do have some of those options it's always better to get more than what you think that you are going to actually need um, because you just don't know what your artwork is going to end up looking like um, this bush here next to me it had beautiful flowers all over it, but it has already almost stopped blooming, but I caught one. Yes, yes, look at that gorgeous little beauty. Um, and my tree over here, oh my goodness, I have to show you my tree over here. Like, look at this thing behind me. Is that not gorgeous? Okay, so I'm gonna collect some of those. Some other things you could grab are some nice green leaves. Those are nice, uh, blades of grass even, clover. You don't want a whole bunch of the same thing. So think about it, grab what you can, and um, then I'll meet you back inside and <laughs> we will start pressing these bad boys. Um, I wanna show you real quick before we go inside. Um, over here, some cool looking grasses. So, uh, let's find them here they are so the tops of those will look really cool pressed so you could try that um, so I'll grab some of those grasses and um, so yeah whatever you can find just grab it and take it inside and we'll get pressing these flowers together so we will try a few different pressing methods. Um, basically the reason I wanna try a couple different methods is because I'm not sure if you will have time for this first traditional method, which is pressing them in a book. If you have time, then this could be a fun way to do it. But if you run out of time, I wanna give you some other options. So with this first method, you are going to need um, some like parchment paper or wax paper or something like that. Um, and then I find it most helpful to cut this into smaller sections. Some people like to press a big section of the flowers um, and lay like a lot of flowers on the parchment paper all together. The problem that I have with that is you need to make sure the flowers look exactly as you want them to look when they are finished pressing when you lay them down. So if you have a bunch of flowers inside one paper, it sometimes is hard to ensure that they all are looking the way that they should. So go ahead and grab your little piece of parchment paper and your first flower. Now, um, my parchment paper kept rolling up on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you the suggested tip of when you open the parchment paper, fold it in half where you're gonna want to fold it. I found that out later in this video. You'll see I found that if I folded the parchment paper, it did a lot better and then I could hold down the other side with something weighted like my scissors. You wanna arrange your flower on there how you want it to look whenever it is pressed, whenever the job is finished. 
because if you don't have it arranged in the way you want it to look then when it is finished pressing it's kind of stuck in that way you can't move the petals at all or anything so um, press it down a little bit with your finger to go ahead and get it looking the way you want it to and to make sure that it's going to stay that way. Some people suggest turning the flower over and laying it down upside down. They say that it stays open better. Um, I don't know that I have found either way works particularly better, but um, definitely you want to put it in the parchment paper the way you want it to look when it's finished pressing and then fold the parchment paper over that flower. The next thing that you need to do is to grab a large thick book and um, you want to slide your paper into somewhere in this book. I always personally think that if you put them closest to the spine it helps them to stay the way you put them in there and not to move if you have to move your book at all but that's just maybe a personal preference of mine so I'm gonna continue putting these paper sorry putting these flowers into the parchment paper and sticking them in the book but just for time's sake I'm going to speed it up so that you have your maximum creativity time after this, I will show you a second and third method of pressing flowers, so stay tuned. Now take your large book and stack other books on top of it. Now, I don't know if this is also a personal preference, but I like to stack a lot of books on it to ensure that it's going to get really flat. After this, let it set for seven to 10 days at least. So the book method is definitely the least labor intensive method, but it is the longest that you have to let the flowers sit. Flower pressing method number two involves using your iron, like what you would iron clothes for. So to get ready for this, it is the exact same way as the book method. We will flatten our flowers inside of parchment paper. This one you cannot use wax paper for, it must be parchment paper. And once you put the flowers in the parchment paper, you actually want to line, them, line the parchment paper with paper towel. So you want to grab a paper towel and put it on the inside of the parchment paper because that is going to help absorb some of that water from the flower. Then you close up the paper towel, you close up the parchment paper, you sit your iron on it on the lowest setting and you let it just sit there. You don't have to move it around for 30 seconds. Then you remove the iron and check the flower. Then you sit the iron back on the flower and let it just sit there for another 30 seconds. And you continue doing this by putting it on for 30 seconds, take it off, check. Put it on for 30 seconds, take it off, check. Um, and some of the flowers, I needed to do this for um, seven different cycles of 30 seconds. And some of the flowers, I had to do it for a number of um, cycles where it was just, you know, I did not even count them that it, it was that many times. It will dry the flowers in about three minutes, but um, you have to be constantly watching it and every 30 seconds checking it. Flower pressing method three is using your microwave to press these flowers. So we have to make a flower press that can go into the microwave. And I'll show you how to do that. But I will say, even though this is the fastest of the three methods, in my opinion, it does not allow the beauty of the flowers to shine through. So let me explain more as we work through what to do. For this method, you will need two pieces of cardboard, parchment paper, and paper towels. You cannot use wax paper. You will also need rubber bands and of course the flowers. You will stack the uh, cardboard and then a paper towel and then um, parchment paper, then a paper towel, then a flower, then a paper towel, then parchment paper, um, then a paper towel, then flower, then a paper towel, then parchment paper, and so on. So if you didn't get the idea, the, the flower goes in between two paper towels and then parchment paper around that. And this is to help dry it out while it is in the microwave. 
you put it in the microwave for 30 second bouts and keep checking it when you take it out. Now it will be a little warm, so you have to wait till it cools a little bit when you take it out of the microwave. Then you check it and see if the flowers are dry. They will create a little bit of a burnt flower smell and um, it, there was no problem with it um, melting anything or catching anything on fire or anything like that. I did three rounds of 30 seconds, so it was a minute and a half altogether. Um, I will say the flowers were more brittle when they came out than they were from the iron. They were also, um, they were brown in appearance compared to the ones from the iron that were much more colorful. So what I am doing here is removing the microwaved flowers from the wrapping and comparing them to the flowers that I ironed. So like right now in my hands, I have a flower from the microwave and there's the flower that I ironed. So you can see that the microwave one has much more of a brown appearance. Um, and then here's another one from the microwave and then here's the ironed version. That one's really distinct. Um, and the ones from the microwave are very brittle. So I would only use this option if you forgot to press yours in a book and you do not have an iron. Um, otherwise, do not use this method because it did not make for beautiful flowers. It made for brown, brownish, yellowish flowers, which I guess is good if you want to make your art look like a sepia tone or like a, an antique look. But other than that, it's not going to have that beautiful, um, vibrant color the flowers once were. So here's an example on the left side you have the flowers that were flattened with an iron or pressed with an iron and on the right side you had the flowers that were pressed with the microwave press. Well I hope you enjoyed this pressing process. Save your flowers for next week's project. We will be doing a project with our pressed flowers.